but I do not actually trust uh, OBS anymore. Uh, so I'm gonna go virtual. Okay, cool. Looks like I am streaming. I'm gonna un mute the volume and see if I can hear myself, which will cause an echo briefly. Mute the volume and see if I can hear myself, which will cause an echo briefly. Mute the volume and see if I can hear myself, which will cause an echo briefly. Oh, that was fun. Oh, hang on. Did I just... Never mind. That's my headphone volume, which I'm not using. Okay. And it looks like uh, I'm not only broadcasting, I'm excellent, according to the little blue button that uh, that has... Um, uh, that has the thing that tells you that you're doing excellent. Okay, so we're going to quickly go through the first parts of the agenda. This is just Emacs scratch page, so I'm not even going to save it. Um, first of all, I'm going to complain about t Twitch cutting off the beginnings of my videos. Uh, usually once the uh, you know st start streaming button on OBS changes to stop streaming, I assume I'm live. But it turns out that uh, I accidentally watched one of my videos. No one should watch one on purpose. But it turns out some advice I gave early on was almost entirely cut off, and it was like 30 seconds to a minute. So, um, so that's pretty bad, actually. Uh, and then um, I think Twitch uh, rolled out a new interface uh, to show that they hate us. Um, and don't worry, Twitch. We, we understand that you hate content creators. Every, everything you do shows us that. But uh, now, you, of course, you have the, uh, the scroll bars that don't show up until you're near them, except if that's not working, you have scroll bars you can't reach at all, which means uh, it's bad enough the way it is. It's really hard to know that there should be a scroll bar there. You, it's hard to tell that you're looking at only part of the page, especially if it, you know, if the bottom part is black, you don't even know that th there's more to the page. So getting rid of the scroll bars all, all the time, bad move number one. Also, not browser friendly. Browser people should be able to choose how they want scroll bars to show. Second of all, when that doesn't work, the uh, you know, the proximity scroll bars don't work, uh, you're kind of stuck. It took me forever to get the stream info updated because I literally couldn't get to the, uh, the button that says done after you're done editing. So you suck, guys. Good job. Keep it up. OK, um, I did have some issues. I don't know. I'm trying to save this file because I'm just paranoid. Um, I, I do have a new microphone, which as um, nearly as I can tell does not actually help help me in any way, shape, or form. Um, I certainly don't sound any better. Um, sound maybe worse because you can hear me more clearly. Okay, I'm going to go um, real quickly and talk. Wah! Ha ha ha! No. The box tip uh, previously cut off. Now, earlier I did give a tip about VirtualBox, uh, which I'll go ahead and give again. Um, I didn't know this, and maybe it's not, it wasn't possible until recently. You can actually uh, take a snapshot of a VirtualBox while it's running. So that's what I've been doing. And then when you restore the virtual box, you're you know you're totally in X, you're totally in Emacs, you're totally in everything. You don't have to like shut it down, um, save it, and then bring it back up and you know restart X in it or anything. So this is pretty cool. Now obviously, um, oh there's more. So I'm gonna keep adding stuff. Um, now obviously there's some things that can't be restored, but it's it's pretty good. It, it restores most of what you want. Okay. Um, now I actually did have a chance to. Uh, Yes, I did have a chance to uh, merge my gits on this machine, La Paz, or La Paz, if you are uh, Castilian, um, and Sao Paulo, which is my main machine. Um, so uh, now I'm going to do something, and uh, I erased BC git from here. I might also do that with some of the other larger files, but um, we'll figure that out. Um, to keep things kosher, I'm going to, well, to keep things the same, I'm going to SSHFS and install and mount the my Sao Paulo's BC git on top of this one. I'm almost sure this is a really bad idea. It does mean my files will remain synced, but it also, I'm sure, will end up exposing something that I don't want people to see. Uh, but that's okay because no one watches my stream, and I'm even going to put it up on YouTube because I mean, I'm convinced that no one will ever watch my streams. I mean, we're creating video content these days at a rate that's much much faster than real time, literally. You know, I mean, maybe if all the people in the world watch video at the same time at a little bit of a speed up, and we somehow eliminated the duplicates and all that stuff, maybe they'd be able to get through it. But I, I just get the feeling there will now be videos um, on YouTube and, and Twitch, actually, I mean, streams, that literally no one is watching and no one ever will watch because the growth rate of video is so fast that it, it precludes people from ever watching it. I don't know what the philosophical implications of that are, but, um, well, that's what's going to happen. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it is, I don't have a etc. host file set up, so I'm pretty sure this is a, this one, this machine, um, Lapath, is uh, 0.03. It's a virtual, but it still has an IP address. Um, and this should be the correct command. I can't tell you this password, obviously. It's boyfriend. No, that, wow, that's kind of gay, actually, in, in a bad way for me. Okay, but nonetheless, we are now here at, uh, we now have this. Uh, this also means that it, this will invalidate all of our uh, open buffers. Um, actually, not all of them, but some of them, because, um, because they are in their focus. So let's see what our freaking open buffers are. So we can go to meta x, list buffers. And so we can get I'm going to get rid of all the ones that have uh, BC git in them. Oh, actually, now I'm just tempted to, to visit. Oh, wow, you can do a file revert and it'll come back. So we're not, we're not totally screwed. Um, I mean, we weren't anyway, but we don't have to do a reload. Okay, I think I've whined enough about uh, stuff, so I'm going to kill the scratch buffer. And we're going to return to the centers of population, which is, if you remember, our actual topic for today and for the last five days. Um, yeah, and one thing, okay, uh, last time we ran a program that was going to run a long time, and when it was done, it was going to give us uh, a very useful file that told us about the uh, centers of population. And I really need to make that alias here. Okay, so here it is, pop center data. Let's take a look at that file real quick. Now, um, another thing we're going to be doing, I'm just talking, I just got tons of stuff to do, because uh, yesterday I took a break to, uh, well, be screwed over. But anyway, um, <sighs> pop center data. Okay, we're going to explain this in a minute. Uh, now, at some point, we are, this is all for a stack exchange answer. So at some point, we need to start writing up the answer as well. Um, and I'm going to do that uh, as we go along, as we, we're, we're very close to actually getting the answer now. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start getting the answer start documenting the answer. And there's a lot of other stuff we want to say, uh, you know, about this, this problem that maybe is less important, but we still want to get it in there. So what this file does is basically, this is what we, we ran. Um, uh, we ran this program, BC Pop Center uh, PL, and we got this result. And this result basically gives us a country code, the sum of all the Y vectors of all of the arc seconds, well, uh, sorry, 30 arc second boxes that make up this uh, this station. Uh, that's the sum of the y vectors. The y vector, of course, is computed from the x, y, z vector of the position of the uh, of the 30 arc second box. Um, this is uh, the pretend area. This is actually not the area, but it is the sum of uh, the, uh, the sort of the uh, widths of these uh, 30 arc second squared things. Now, the heights are going to be approximately equal because the uh, latitude is approximately equal on Earth. The longitudes will change. For example, 30 arc seconds near the North Pole, very small distance. Uh, near the equator, 30 arc seconds of longitude is about 30 arc seconds of latitude. Number of points, again, this we probably won't use this, but it's interesting to know. How many, um, how many 30 arc second grids does this, uh, does this place take up? And then the total of the x value and this is the total of the z value here, and the population, not meaning the real population, but the total summed population that we got from, from doing all of these, um, you know, from adding up all these arc seconds. So the, the, to find the center of population, we're going to take the x, y, and z values and divide them by the population. Now, because the Earth is uh, spherical, approximately, um, this vector is going to be inside the Earth, so we'll need to project it back to the Earth. None of this is really that difficult. The difficult part was actually compiling all this information and getting to this point. Um, so now, I was originally going to um, just add to this BC Pop Center um, program to parse this file, um, but and honestly, if I if I was doing Git correctly, every project would be a separate GitHub, and that's not going to happen. Um, so I'm going to sort of take, I'm going to go ahead and actually create another file because I'm actually not super duper happy with adding to this one. Plus it's actually working, so I don't want to break it, even though we're never going to run it again. So BC Pop Center parse.pl. And let's go ahead and create that. And if there's anyone in chat, please tell me. I'm very, very bored. Okay, let me just see if there's anything else we need to sort of, okay. Um, okay, um... 
Yeah, I'm gonna do this convention here, which is, uh... I have a little, pro a little uh, subroutine called command file, which uh, returns the data in the file as the first uh, argument, you know, as the first parameter, and the file name is the second parameter. The only real reason I'm doing this is because, um... It, it's sort of nice in terms of giving me error messages. If I choose the wrong uh, wrong file, if I don't have permission to the file, it goes through and checks all that. And it's not a secret, uh, it's not a secret uh, subroutine or anything. It should be right here. Here it is, and it's it's very simple. But it does sort of, um, and it does sort of give you option, you know, warning if you don't give it the, uh, and if you give it more than one file, if you give it no files, it sort of does warn you about that. So that's kind of nice there. Okay, and so what I always like to do is. Um, Let's see if it, you know. Let's see if we can get this going. All right. So, okay. Sorry, I need to do a Perl fix, which is wow, groovy. Oh wow. That. Fixed that. Oh, you know what? I think I did fix that alias, but I need to re-alias it. And what that does is it just makes all my Perl scripts executable, which again I probably should have done in some better way. And that's fine. Uh, the fact that it's taking this long is not fine. I'll give it another one second. Up your find home user home minus my name. Okay, well. And then because I'm using T shell, I do have to do a rehash. Uh, which also shouldn't have taken that long. Now, one mistake I sort of made with this VM is it uses up a lot of memory, almost all of my 128 gigabytes, uh, as much as it'll allow me to. That's great in the sense that I can do anything with it, but it's bad because it means when VM, uh, when uh, VirtualBox runs, it, it really needs to suck up a lot of memory. Uh, so that's kind of bad. And see, now it's... Whoa. Well, screw it. Oh, I know why it's not doing that, because um, the file is actually, of course, on my other machine, but still. Okay, and it needs a file name. Good. And this file isn't actually that big, so... All right, there we go. So what we're going to basically do is we're going to suck out the information from this file, and we're going to suck it all out, and then we're going to basically just sort of uh, review it. Uh, and, uh, and, and it occurs to me that I could have actually done this as a while, blah, blah, blah. Uh, decisions, decisions. Well, we'll compromise and do it the worst possible way. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take the data. We'll split it at under new lines. Um, now, this, this just shows you what a bad programmer I am, because I kind of want to make sure that the split worked. But, of course, it will work. Yeah, it would be good if I were to actually split the data instead of the file name. Well, that name's pretty cool too. All right. See, and that's why I do these tests because I'm really bad pr pr bad programmer. Okay. So what we're going to be looking for now is something colon space something, uh, and we can end it with these are all numbers. So I'm tempted to say we can't end it with a comma because this one doesn't end with a comma. So I'm tempted to say. Uh, letters, colon, space, numbers. And remember, numbers does include negative and a dot, which are not typically included, but we need to do that. Okay. Um, because we're looping through it, I don't want to change the variable. Um, but I do want to... Oh, shoot. Am I doing really bad things now? Okay, this is probably bad coding. I always do it this way, but it's always bad. Okay, so what we're going to say is we're, we're going to get rid of them all, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a little hash here of the values. And I just didn't say my, I don't need to set it to anything. All right, so what we're going to do is going to get rid of and that's, we're going to make this case insensitive. A bunch of letters colon, space, a bunch of numbers, which backslash D is just an abbreviation for that. But we also need to add 
uh, all of these. By the way, I probably don't need the backslash in front of this minus because it's the very last thing in this bracket, but otherwise the bracket, the hyphen would mean from to, like it does here. But I'm not going to try to confuse people that much. So what we're doing is we're getting rid of all of them, which means afterwards it'll be I will be almost empty except for the brackets and the spaces. Uh, do I want to get rid of the brackets? I do not. Okay. And then we just do the basic, uh, oops, sorry. So that's the name, that's the value. And we just do this. And now, more bad programming, we're just going to put it on one line, because it's not very interesting. Well, I mean, it's, it's it does all the work, but it's still, oh, that's not good looking there. Did I mean to put an ignore case there? I probably did. Oh, no, this is a plus. We can have more than one character. <laughs> Yay, looks good, in the sense that it looks bad. Okay, so now, let's see. Let's go ahead. I'm going to be a little bit... Uh, I'm going to be a little bit inefficient and just say my average x is hash of x over hash pop, which at least I hope that's hash pop. And the way I can check is by looking at the same... Let's actually do this. No. Ooh. So I can look at it while, I, you know, look at the file while I'm, I'm coding this to make sure I got all these things correct. It is um, hash x and then... Now you will you will probably um, point you know you will probably point out that I could have put this in a loop of some sort, but I'm okay with this. Um, crap, no, I'm not. Okay, sorry, I'm going to do it correctly now. By the way, this is also a really good example of bad programming. I've done it correctly, but I'm going to go ahead and change my mind, so I'm wasting time now. So this is how to waste some time. Um, and what we're going to say here is hash of AVG dollar sign J. So we're going to keep putting it, put it in the hash, and it's going to be dollar sign hash of J over hash pop. Hash pop sounds a little bit, a little bit like K-pop, but it's different. Okay. And once again, we're going to do this terrible thing to it. Um, and let's go ahead and debug the hash now to make sure we we have it, I'm, I'm confident we do. And notice we should have three extra values in the hash because of what I just did. Okay, and we do. Very nice. Av hack, average x, average y, average z. So now we can actually do something fairly easy with these. Um, we can convert these Cartesian coordinates to spherical coordinates. Um, oh, this one I might not want to do this way. Yeah, what the hell? This is just to show you how good or terrible um, Perl is. Uh, can I actually do this? Let's see. If I set this to XYZ to spherical. Okay, and this is another reason not to kind of do this, which is uh, you have to now write really long values arguments. But, you know. And I don't actually think this will work, but there's a way to make it work. And, and it is so hideous. Um, and this, I guess, is what makes me, uh, you know, it really does make me a bad. And three. And that the problem there is because it's uh, returning a list, uh, and it just returns a number of elements in the list. So can we actually have it, have this be a, be a list? Yes, we can. And now this should become a list ref. Uh, yeah, it is. I array is a, is a list ref. So now we could actually have it do this. This is going to be ugly. But now we'll see our values come back at us. Um, yeah, they're there. Um, and that's going to be r theta, sorry, <laughs> theta, this is theta, phi, and uh, radius. And the radius, if the radius is bigger than one, something has gone wrong. But there will be some cases where it is equal to one. And of course, um, Uh, let's see, x, y, the spherical coordinates. Yeah, we will need to convert to, um, to lat. We're going to go ahead and convert to something that people can actually use. So that is going to be, uh, 
Oh man. I made myself really <laughs> This is my longitude actually. Wow. Okay, I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, and then I can divide by degree. Uh, because we're converting from radians to degrees, and uh, multiplying will go the other way. We can do the same thing for the lat. Yeah, this maybe have been a bad idea. Uh, because now, um, because I probably should want to use shorter variable names, this one we don't change because it's the radius, and we, we, we want to sort of keep it that way. Okay, um, now we can, we're starting to get to where we can actually understand what's going on. And again, I could have made this fudge. I'm going to admit that uh, this is not, this is what they call uh, not imposter syndrome, but actual imposterism, which probably isn't a word. But uh, let's go ahead and do this. This, um, it's clever in the sense you don't need another namespace. It's ugly in the sense of every possible other thing. So let's do this. Let's do Let's hit the quotation mark four times. No, let's not do that. Um, and I realize we're going to hit a, a sort of a barrier here in just a second. And that is, um, uh, we don't know what these country codes add up to. I mean, we, we know, but we don't know. How's that for? How's that for? Legal division by zero. So somewhere I have done something really bad. And is that because I am not defining degree correctly? Oh no, it's right, it's uh, rad to deg. Radians to degrees. I try to do it the mathematical way, which is... Uh, okay. Now the three zero zero zeros are not looking too good right now. So I've got to figure out what's going on here. Unless rad deg is set incorrectly. Or I didn't actually get... Um, Starting to regret doing this. Yeah, because this is actually um, it's it's this, but I mean at some point the notation becomes so hideous, and I might actually need to put a an at sign in front of all that too. Let's see what that does. Nope. Because what it really is is it is this list zeroth element, then this list first Do you parenthesis there? No, I don't. First element, I think. Okay. Um Okay, so I think I've wasted uh, currently about uh, 23 minutes of your time. I'm going to actually go ahead and do this the, uh, the way I should have done it, which is I'm going to declare more variables. I'm going to try being just to stop being so clever, and I'm not going to try to stuff more things into this hash. Sorry. I'm not sorry, actually. My goal is to make you suffer, and I think I have succeeded. Uh, let's see. All right. And the nice thing is then we're just passing around very simple variables, not hashes, lists of hashes of hashes of lists and all that crap. Although that used to be fun. When I was younger, I used to love creating Perl objects, complexity. But they're not really... Um, and we're, these are the longitude, latitude, and um, radius. But um, we're going to change them. Editing, I don't, I'm not too worried about converting a variable. So average, let's see. And here we can debug that R. Now we can get rid of this over here. And the rest of this code doesn't actually does something, but it's not going to do anything for us, so we're fine. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Um, let's go ahead and fix the, uh, I'm going to double check to make sure I have those actually printed. I actually have those those variables, and they really should be constants, of course. But uh, radians to degrees, so radians to degrees. Let's 
Same with that. And actually another benefit of this is even though I'm not using loops, it's a little bit clearer what I'm doing. And we don't actually need to change arcs. That's that's actually a uh, it's actually that's actually a value. It's a, it's a not a Okay, awesome. Now we're, we're noticing the longitudes are getting to be bigger than uh, 180 um, because of the way we need to, uh, let's see, if longitude is bigger than 180, we need to subtract 360 from it. And that is, again, not a huge deal. That's just because we want our longitudes to go from negative 180 to 180 the way everybody else in the world does them uh, instead of from 0 to 360, which is perfectly valid, but it's not the way everyone else does them. So if longitude greater than 180, longitude minus equals 360. So we're still not, we still don't know what we're doing exactly, but we're getting there. All right, let's look at the hash CC. I think I can get rid of this code. Let me, um, okay. Now, in theory, I should be able to do a BC git from where I am because um, I have the exact same setup, but something tells me that's not going to work. So I'm going to do a BC git from the other machine. Sorry, you guys can't see this. And I'm going to call it checkpoint because, you know, every single time I do something like this, it should be called checkpoint. That make your git comments as confusing as possible. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we're going to look at this real quick, and it is 98, 94. So this is, these are, these values are meaningless to us. I mean, the latitude and longitude are actually pretty interesting. We could, if we wanted to, and I suddenly want to, we could try visiting a couple of these, you know, let's and see if we can guess what country they're the center of. Um, and again, this is not useful information to you. This is once again, oh, hang on. Let me do it for OSM, which is uses the uh, other uh, order, lat, ung. And I'll go ahead and put the CC in there because that, in theory, will act as a check. All right, let's just do a couple of these real quick. Uh, okay. La 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 la. Where is this lovely country? My, that sounds like Palo. And you'll notice that I just made that up to pretend like I'm smart. Oh, if I'm right about that, Suva Api, I think that might be Tuvalu or something. Let's go back a little bit. Oh, wow. We don't actually know where that is. By the way, this is. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we have a readme, but I think we have two readmes. This one, um, this is actually um, for another method I used using geonames. So we are going to actually have the experience of having a readme. Uh, second answer. Okay. So, second answer using GPW. Okay. So, we're going to put a little to do list for. All. We're not going to actually write the answer yet. Uh, mention GPW. We need to mention where we got the sources, sources and URLs. Uh, plus ancillary information about which country is what. Um, point to these, point to the Perl scripts I used. So, they point to Twitch streams on YouTube. Just mess that up. Um, uh, just in case someone wants to watch this, uh, watch me go through this crap. Um, and for right now, I think that's all we, we need to worry about. Um, mention Unix command. Okay, so we also want to mention the Unix commands I used. Um, although I don't think we're using that many uh, right now, we are going to use one in just a minute. And we could start writing up the answer now if we wanted to, but we're not going to. Okay, so now the question is, we have all these lovely, even though it's not working because I put the wrong variable name in, <sighs> like a freaking chicken with my head cut off. And of course, that's going to be hash CC, not just, okay. And we have a lot of this cool stuff going on, but we don't know what these countries are, so that's not really very useful to us. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so where are we going to get the country information? Well, we actually have it. Um, somewhere. 
it's it might be in the readme files I don't know national identifier grid population adjusted it's in a sh uh, let's see actually actually let me see if it's here somewhere it, it might actually just be um If I remember correctly, we actually didn't use these files to uh, to build it. Why do I have them still around? God damn it! How very inefficient with space here. All right, let's go ahead and bring up the um, this one. And yeah, we did it from 2019-1204. Those aren't even the original files, but those are where we had the original files. And I'm pretty sure the original files have a shape file in them somewhere. Except if I could correctly, nope. Uh, before nat grad, there we go, and we have a shape file here. So this is a shape file that was distributed with the, um, you know, with the with the data. So, what's so special about this? Well, if you do an OGR info um, a minus al, I hope that's the correct command. This is going to tell you a lot about the shape file, and uh, so it's going to tell you there's uh, 248 polygons in here, 248 countries. Uh, some of these are multi polygons, so it's but it's still considered a polygon. Population estimate, projection, um, but the important thing for us here is value integer. This is the thing we associate with this. Now, one problem we're going to see here is this data includes all the polygon data, which is takes forever to get through because polygon data is fairly large. It's all on one line, line 47 in this case, um, for Afghanistan. But it's going to take forever to get to the next one. It's not really, but... Um, so now, little tip here. We're going to try to look at the same data, but we know polygon is bad. We don't need all the fields, but let's just see what... Um, so without polygon, it's going to be a lot easier to read, and it is. But it's not, we don't need all of this data, of course. I, mean, I suppose we could. Actually, I'm kind of tempted to get all this data now. Um... Yeah, I'm actually kind of tempted to get all this stuff now. I mean, but we can just actually, wow. Uh, let's see. Yeah, why don't we see if we can grab all this data? And we're going to be so freaking ugly about it, people will talk about this. But I think in this case, I'm actually okay with it. Um... I could put this inside of a function. That's the end of the sentence. Okay. And I don't remember where this is exactly, but I can real path it. You might be getting a little bit of a Unix education here. And then again, you may not be. So this is the file. Again, sort of hard coding the, it like this is terrible. But I'm actually okay with that. Undo, it's not where I'm meant to put it. Oh, I'm meant to put it over here. Close enough. But we don't actually want to uh, do this. We actually want to do the um, the whole shebang, the whole command. OGR info minus AL, and then we actually need the file name, so that part we can sort of keep. Nope, nope, I'm not what I meant to do. Fortunately, we've got some gluing issues going on. Okay, so, and we need the file name here. And f crap minus v polygon. And th in this case, I'm not actually too worried about doing it this way. This is actually really clever, and OGR info runs quickly enough. I'm hoping that we don't need to create a separate file. So what this does is it runs this command and opens an input pipe into Perl. Uh, if you don't believe me, because I don't believe me, let's just make sure we can print out some of the stuff we're getting. And when you do this uh, format, the value is going to be in uh, dollar sign underscore. And I'm beginning to see why per people who don't know Perl don't like it that much. But anyway, so let's go ahead and do this again. Good, 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 good. Always keep me on my toes. Okay, so it looks like... I'm going to put a less in front of it. We don't really need one, though. Oh, that won't work because it's debug data. I have to do pipe to pipe ampersand less. And that, that is for capturing the standard input. Okay. So what we're seeing here is that this thing here, the OGR feature, blah, 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 appears to be the separator 
for the different records in this data. So what we can say here, uh, let's see. So whenever we see this, we will update the, uh, the, the chunk information as it were. Um, now the only thing that's worrying me here is we might not actually want to use four as our code because um, when you get right down to it, that it's, we will, the number we need is 20. 20 is going to be the thing that's going to be giving us information about the country and I really want to kind of uh, tie stuff to this. So I think um, we will, even though I originally thought it was a good idea to use this as our sort of separator, then we're going to ignore that and we're going to use the value integer as our separator because I assume every country has it. If it doesn't, this is data is really bad. So a brief check to see if there's anyone in the... Nope, there is not. Good. I hit all, I hit all of you. Who, 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 never mind. Um, so let's use this as our separator. We'll notice that uh, there's a lot of crap, of course, here. Uh, but let's see. So now... Um, uh, let's just call it uh, country. Over here we'll have, I already have hash down there, although it's inside of a loop, so it's technically not the same thing. Uh, country hash, we'll call it C hash. My country is used to keep track of where we are, what the value is, and I think we can actually start it off at zero. Okay. If we have one of these lines, and again, that's... And I'm, I'm destructive, so I'm going to do it like this. I think we need that. Um, if we have one of these lines, we're going to just set the country. I'm missing something, aren't I? I'm okay. Uh, we're going to send the country to the to the value. Thank you. Try to do backward and don't even know how they work. Uh, country is going to be this is, and that's the only thing that's going to happen with a line like that. And we're going to say next. Now, if I weren't so embarrassed, I'd actually put these all on one line because they really are not very interesting. And if it's anything else, it's going to be string parentheses something equals something. Um, it's not very interesting, but that's what it's going to be. So we're going to say... So we're going to allow any number of spaces between the, the data here. And I think that... It's probably not going to matter. I think these are all just one space, but... Uh, you know what, I'm going to be a little bit cautious here. So that have any number of spaces between the value and the integer, and any number of spaces between that and the equal sign. Here, any number of spaces at the beginning line, we don't care. Uh, then, the dot, then we need the literal parentheses. We don't need to capture this because we don't care about the type. Anything that goes after that, and then end parentheses, so that gets rid of this thing here. Then any number of spaces then an equal sign, and any number of spaces, and whatever is the rest of this, um, the string line, is going to be what we want. But, if there's any spaces after that, we don't want to capture those. Okay. Now, will that work? We have... Um, Now this looks like we're capturing it, but that's only because uh, I'm looking at literal parentheses. So that these are the only two values we're capturing. And now let's see if what that does. Hopefully that'll not work. Okay. Just looking through this again. Yeah, the only thing I'm wondering about is this dot star question mark should be a dot star. Okay. Well, when in doubt, just do part of it. So let's see if we can at least get to um, this part. Okay, so th there's a more fundamental thing going on. So I think this is actually going to be... Um, I get the feeling this is going to be a bad idea because it's going to capture too much now. Yep, that was right. 
So I guess I, what I meant to say up here actually is not dot star, but rather non-space characters. Non-space characters. Non-space characters, assuming that they don't have any spaces inside any of these types. Oh, they do have, they do have, so here we actually can just say dot star because it's to the end of the line. Okay. Let's see if that works. No, still doesn't work. Okay, what's going on? So any number of spaces, any number of non-space characters, followed by any number of space characters. Uh, you know what? I think over here I need a... I need to have at least one non-space character, and over here I also need to have at least one non-space character. So I can't use star, I've got to use plus. Cool. In case plus space characters. Groovy, man. All right, well, we'll go back to uh, building up piece by piece. Because that's what real programmers do, I've been told. Don't know. Uh, let's see what this does. I'm getting kind of unhappy with this now. Okay. Beginning of string, any number of spaces, any number of... If this works, I'll be unhappy. I'm unhappy. It does work. Um, but why do I need a star? Is it because I have, like... Oh, you know what? I think without a... Without a... The question mark here it still should work. Just get at least one freaking care. Oh, there we are. It's better. Um, okay, do I want a plus here in the sense that we do need an, a space between the value and the... Um, yeah, let's just look at the file itself here real quick. That's not the file I want to look at. Okay. So can we assume there's going to be a space between... I think we can, actually. So we're going to assume there's at least one space between the different things. So I think that's going to that's gonna help us. Uh, that's going to be... we'll be able to fix this then. And the number of spaces followed by... Um, this is going to be the, the value we're looking for. This is going to be the leftmost value, like ISO code. Uh, then we need at least one space can have more than one if you want. Uh, any number of non-spaces plus this plus. We need at least one space equal at least one space. And that should just be to the end of the file then. We don't... I don't think there's en there's trailing spaces. And if there are, we can get rid of them in some other way. All right, let's take a look. Uh, and I probably run the program instead of uh, looking at... Okay. Programmer being frustrated, and still no one here to help, not that they would. Okay. Oh, you know what, this this needs to be that. Um, star plus doesn't make sense in this context. Apparently we lose that. Okay, parentheses, space plus, equals space plus, whatever the hell anything. Okay. So I keep saying I'm going to build this up, and I keep not doing it, because I keep thinking I found the secret solution. So let's... So, another important part of programming, by the way, is to never ever do what uh, you're supposed to do. So that's important. So now the, the pr left parentheses, S plus... Oh, no, I don't care what type it is. So, right parentheses. Let's see if that does anything. Nope. Something's wrong. So, let's see if we get as far as the pren. Extent. Okay, good. That works. Um, so, after the parentheses, what do we actually have? Maybe I'm, I'm not getting this. 
sorry. Less wrong file. Yeah, we're actually not even looking at a file, but oh wait, 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 wait. That's what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do. Okay. So it's parentheses, a string of non-spaces. So far should work. And then another parentheses. Yep, still okay. End parentheses, unless there's a space between some of these. Uh, okay. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think that was just because um, the first few lines are, are actually blank because they're actually giving meta information. So we're still good. Uh, space plus. So maybe I was actually just looking at the wrong thing. See so if we can get this far. Yeah, we are. We were actually doing fine. I just wasn't looking far enough. Another important part of programming: screw yourself as much as possible. All right, let's see if this is what I want. There it is. So we have the. Um, Hmm. Why do we have mean unit km three times though? I'm not happy about that. Why is it name zero? Well, these are all questions we must now answer. Let's look at Armenia. Um. Oh. Oh, okay. I think what's going on here is um, when there's a blank line, we just get repeats here because one and dollar one, dollar sign one, dollar sign two don't lose their value if there's no match. So if this line runs and there's no match, these things will just retain their value. However, we can be a little bit cleaner than that and say if there's nothing in this line but spaces. Space dollar sign we can actually skip that line let's try this again oh and again I'm not doing the right thing whoa whoa did I forget to pipe it less on your mom, mommy I forgot to pipe it correct the pipe this less and here we go looks good data type population ridge anyway this apparently gives some additional information we, we don't plan to use um, but we might be able to use for checking. So name zero is probably the thing I care about the most. ISO code. <laughs> okay, that was hilarious. The ISO code for the Barbados, the three letter one is BRB. Uh, they don't seem to have the second two letter one, which is the one I really like. Uh, I mean, in general, not for Barbados specifically. There was a conversion table somewhere, but I think I might, because it's not really important to us, the final answer. Uh, I think I might skip over that. So, okay, over here, let's go ahead and build our country info hash now. Uh, if value equals um, country dollar sign? No, 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 no. Country C hash. Dollar sign country. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm a moron. This is what happens in the special case that we have a, uh, a line that defines a new country. If we do not have a line that defines a new country, we are just going to say C hash of country, which is already defined. Uh, and then the value dollar sign one is equal to dollar sign two. And then over here, we can debug C hash, which is going to be nothing because it's it's going to be a hash. It's a pointer to a hash. But let's see what happens. But I mean, we're not going to print out the inter internal values. Let's see, taking time, taking time, taking time. Okay, that took a little bit more time than I'd like, so we might end up creating a temporary file to make life easier for, for the program. But okay, let me go ahead and uh, write something else that I've written, which is a, a var dump function, very much like a PHP. And this should tell us what's going on. This should, uh, this should be... Uh, nice. I mean, we didn't see most of it, but it was there. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So now that we have the country information, we're going to go back here. We're probably going to end up cleaning stuff up a little bit before we do the final. But um, so C name, which is not the same as a DNS C name. So we know this is the code, but we also know that the uh, uh, 
Oh, I'm actually sort of curious. Um, by the way, you'll notice the, uh, the um, actually, what is the name? CC is the code. Okay, so let's do this real quick. Um, so we should have a nice, let's go crazy. We should have a nice bunch of information for each country as separated by its little CC code that we figured out from, um, from when we ran the program earlier. So these, sh these should be the matching ones. They might not be, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to pipe this to less because it's going to be ugly. OSM 112 undiff. That's not good at all. Okay. Um, and I think I actually meant hash. No, I did mean hash CC. Right, because that is the, the value of the country code. Okay, well, sucks to be me. Let's make sure the keys of the, what we're doing here is correct. And if it's not, it's not. Hmm. That's not cool. Now you're wondering, hey, are, am I really about to pretend this is a, a two-dimensional array? And I should be able to do that, actually. And also, countries are not counties. So that is a very important step in the uh, debugging process, is to misspell everything possible. So I think this one's going to give me what I want. So first, we should see the keys, which should be the same. Yeah, there they are. Beautiful. Gorgeous! Uh, then we do not see what we want here. Um, 308, OSM, OSM. Okay, I don't know why I'm saying OSM here. Did I just, am I just using this for my debug thing? Yeah, I am. Um, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, this is... I got rid of my other debug statement, didn't I? Yeah, well, no, I didn't, but it's down here. Okay, so we're going to debug that and the hash associated with the country code. So, God willing, this will fail because I don't believe in God. So screw you, God. If this works, it proves you don't exist. Okay, you may still exist. Um, so I probably meant to say debug hash CC, didn't I? Yeah. By the way, if you're an old-time programmer, you will realize that I could never get away with this in the olden days because compiling and running a program to debug it, totally unacceptable. Okay, so it looks like we're doing okay here. Uh, we do have, like, for example, country code 156, blah, 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 blah. Um, the only thing, and you know why? Because I really wanted to look at CC hash, didn't I? Uh, or is it uh, C hash? C hash is what I called it. Because the amount of time it took to compile and run programs back in those days was forever and and you would you would have we had other things to check our programs like lint but uh seriously okay c hash let me double check that it is c hash c hash it is c hash c hash of hash cc so let's oh you know the only thing you can think of is i actually need a pointer my var dump program doesn't necessarily work great with uh, an array, with a hash. Um, so let's see if we can get this far. Okay, good. They are, they are hashes. And then let me see if I can do an unfold instead of it. They're, they're slightly different functions that do the same thing. No, they do different things slightly. And we no longer need to debug the keys. We know that's working. So let's do this now. Dun 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 dun. Hey, isn't that gorgeous? So country number 100 is Bulgar, which we, I think, would call Bulgaria. Um, okay. Now, of course, it's possible we still have all of this wrong. For example, this is Chile. Oh, we don't even have a... Okay, yeah. Um, but it 
but you know maybe it's not really country 152 but okay at this point I kind of want to make a little github which I have to do in the other uh, I have to do a git save here in the other uh, machine I'm just going to call it checkpoint again and this is for your benefit because now you can get this code on git without having to retype in what I typed in and if you believe that I've got a load of crockery to sell you it's for my benefit okay so now we have this 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 so now so we're going to say now C info country info equals we're going to take C hash, hash of CC, this is the hash, and to, to make it a real hash we do this. I bet you didn't know that. Um, you didn't want to. Okay, so now we have the information we need. So we want, um, let's go crazy with C info name zero, that's going to be the name of the country. Um, long this, this is the sort of basic thing we need, which is the longitude, the latitude, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put R in there for right now. I'm going to put it also in the final result. We need more than this, though. We also need the other fields uh, that have been computed by the earlier program we run. We might actually need pretty much all of them. Um, and I see, what else do we want from here? We want the ISO code. <sighs> you know what? I want, I, want, I want quite a bit of information. This is going to be a, a spreadsheet eventually, so... And I, the nice thing about the ISO code, it's going to be, uh, okay, now, to do, read me, note ISO code is three letters, not two. Because usually people are used to two letter, uh, uh, two letter country codes. But in this case, they're using three letter country code. Okay, so we want the country's name. And if this is going to be a comma separated value, we don't need spaces between the commas. This, this, and this. Um, Cities in code. I mean, this other stuff would be pretty good to have, actually. Um, not age level necessarily. Cities in code mean unit kilometers. That see would really help us check to see that our that our p area uh, value is correct. Plus, um, do we have a total population here? Oh, how awful that they don't. Let me see if they do by uh, <laughs> cheating and looking at for the United States. Oh wow, already printing stuff. Okay, so something is wrong here, and I think I know what it is. Um, what the hell happened? I could have sworn I cleaned this up. Um, maybe I dirtied it up again. Um, Oh, no, no, right, right. Sorry, we were up here. So that long, uh, we do not need to do this anymore. We don't need to do this hideousness or this hideousness. And we can get rid of these debug statements, of course. Okay, so now we have the latitude, longitude, and this is just going to be C info ISO code, da da da, da long lat and radius. And of course, we're going to need to explain the columns in the spreadsheet. And I will make a note column by column. Uh, Okay. And it just occurred to be, well, I don't know how deep we want to go into it, but Andorra is actually not a sovereign nation, but it's owned by two different nations at different times of the year, Sp Spain and France. However, I'm pretty happy with the way they do the, um, they do the rest of this um, computation. So I'm going to not mention Andorra unless there are other examples like Andorra which need special mention. Okay, rock and roll. And this is getting close to what we're actually going to be printing out. Okay, these numbers look pretty reasonable. Um, let's go ahead and do this. And remember, it's going to be, we have to use the second result OSM gives us because it reverses its, uh, okay. So this is there, but this, which is, I think, the value we want, is right in the dead smack center of Ethiopia, and booyah, that's where we want it. Okay, fantastic. So now we're ready to actually print out a CSV file. I'm 
probably going to keep it headerless uh, because I hate people and I'm going to have a readme file that explains it. So we need to mention the readme file. Well, now this is going to be recursive because we're actually going to be mentioning this file and it's going to contain the answer. But, you know, whatever. Okay. So now... Now, the, the question actually originally was uh, find the northernmost uh, find the northernmost capital. So I think what we can do once we actually get this print, that's, that's the radius, um, Islas Malvinas is the correct name for the Falkland Islands. And actually they're part of the United Kingdom, so that we need to worry about. Okay, special cases like FLK and Andorra. And in fact, you might think that's not possible, but holy moly, um, okay. There's actually a spreadsheet, which I downloaded, I think. Um, I sourced it and I downloaded it. Aren't I brilliant? Um, nope, nope, nope. 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 Yeah, there's actually a spreadsheet which tells you how to convert OpenStreetMap's country names into real country names for countries, uh, for, uh, you know, islands and stuff that are not sovereign, uh, such as the Falkland Islands and actually even the Faroe Islands. Um, so what I might do is, you know, we might, uh, I mean, technically because, you know, they, they belong to other people, we, we actually do need to include them. My first answer is very thorough about that, uh, but because I don't have necessarily the third, um, all of these, uh, you know, actually I might have the conversion table somewhere. Uh, but for right now, let's just take a look at the way it is, and we're going to go ahead and actually finally print stuff. And remember to have the new line so we don't run our lines together. And let me quickly take a look at what it is I wanted to, um, what else I wanted to include here. So let's go down a little bit. Uh, ISO code we're including. Don't care about this. We do care about this when printing it. Cities in code. Oh, ISO, sorry, hang on. S season code. Okay, I don't know what that is, so I don't want it. Data year, data level, sex level, age level, grew start, grew end, grew level, last census. So this is the only other one we need mean unit kilometer. I don't e even know what that is, though. But that's why we include things like this. Now, you might say, if I'm going to sort this data, do I really do I want spaces instead of commas? Uh, and the answer to that question is actually no. So let's... Um, and this time, we're not going to even debug, because we actually want the answer. I'm going to call it Pop Center 1 because we're going to probably revise what we're doing here. But we can load it into here and... Uh, now by the way, it the file exists even before uh, the program finishes running. Okay, and I probably meant to sort that, but that's okay, we can do that. So here we are, here we have the centers of these various countries. Now the problem is I'm going to sort them and what's going to come up at top is the Furrow Islands because they have a very high uh, latitude, but they're not an independent nation. They belong to Denmark. Uh, the actual highest is going to be Iceland, I happen to know from the previous work that I've done. And we're going to give out that. Oh, actually, let me make some notes to that. Um, mention other ans answer as well uh, and point to it. So if people want to look at the answer I used uh, coming up using geonames, it's there, but it's not quite working. So let's go ahead and actually do this, though. Now, so the way to do this, um, I think, okay, I forgot what the one was for, I think it's either minus A or minus T that lets you choose uh, field separator. So sort minus T, let me, let me look at the data again, sorry. Uh, no, let me look at the thing we just created. Pop center one. And it's this is going to be pop center two here in a minute. Okay, so what we want to do is a sort using a comma, using the, now um, sort uses a one based array. So one, two, three, four. So we want sort on the fourth field, numerically, in reverse, to find the northernmost, um, whatever the hell it is I was talking about. Pop center. God damn it, I'm never going to get this right. Um, and we're going to push it to pop center two. Let's take a fraction of a second. Pop center two will tell us. Oh, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Um, Svalbard. 
I don't know how to pronounce this, Svalbard and Jan Mayan Islands uh, up at 78, uh, then Greenland up at 66. Iceland is the actual answer. Greenland is actually a uh, d dependency of Denmark. I don't know who this is a dependency of. Um, actually, I, I, mean, I, could, I, I think I have the data where I need it. Um, Faroe Islands, again, dependency of Denmark. Finland, Norway being the real second ones. So this answer as it is, because the question was really what's the northernmost uh, center of population, is not going to work, because there's too many uh, cases of, of countries being owned by other countries. Fortunately, I think I went in part of the geonames, uh, in part of the geonames uh, part of the project, I think I actually, and this isn't it. You would think this is it, but this is the one I was going to create for myself, because I didn't like the other one. And you'll notice that it's called dependent scenes because I can't type. So actually, let me see. There, there was there is another one that actually um, I do use. There it is. Dependent country. This is the one from Google. Um, and I actually use it in the other. So there's quite a few here, but believe it or not, it's still incomplete. Uh, and Antarctica, of course, is um, it's not covered by this file, but also. Um, I think there's an open question as to whether Antarctica has any real permanent residence. I, I think the uh, Amundsen Scott base at the South Pole is manned year-round now, but I don't think it's the same people manning it. And certainly you can't have a residence of Antarctica because uh, there's does Antarctica doesn't have citizens. It's not, even a, it's not even a sovereign nation. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, you see Koch, center of country. And I think what I do here early on is I read the dependent data from, see it says right there I'm doing it. So why don't we go ahead and actually uh, do that too in our uh, pop center, no, nope, pop center parse PL. And now I think we've just hit a problem. Um, because the question is, can we actually just add populations, y vectors, x vectors, and z vectors? Um, and stuff like this. So this is going to be ugly because uh, and we might be able to hack it, but the problem here is, of course, um, country equals dollar sign one means that we have a separate one for each island. Uh, so we have a separate uh, all these uh, this external data for uh, an island. And I could even, yeah, I'm not happy about this now. Um, now in the x, y, and z data here, we could add the x vector, y, y vector, z vectors, and population, uh, because I think that is a reasonable way of doing things. Unfortunately, I don't think we can, uh, we can fix like the country name and stuff, because actually we might be able to, hang on. Yeah, this is problematic because, um, oi, Gavalt. I'm not Jewish, by the way, but if I were, I would say it would Gavalt. Okay, so the problem here is going to be, let's go ahead and get to something that actually is a problem, like the Furrow Islands. Like the Furrow freaking... Yeah, or, Cameroon, these are, or these, no, they're not. Let's just say islands. Oh yeah, because you spell it wrong. This is uh, Danish when converted to English has multiple uh, transliterations, uh, which is why the Danes should learn how to speak English. Um, so we have this value ISO code fro, and it does have its own I, I UNSD code. So is that the thing that's going to give us what we actually want? Uh, surprisingly, um, it'd be good to know, wouldn't it? Let's see. Try to find anything in here that says this is a this is a dependency. So let's look at UNSD code. Maybe that is the magic that we've been waiting for. Well, at least they have it. Uh, standard country area codes for statistical notes M forty nine. Um. So, Island Islands are 248. Australia, let me find one that I know is, is dependent. 
Antarctica 010, that could be a special case. The American Samoa does belong to us, but um, Bouvet Island belongs to France. Did you know that? Let's go ahead and use the fairy, however they want to spell the fucking Faroe Island. See, here they spell it differently. So, so this is what sucks, is that GPW4 does not use the same spelling as these guys. So that's 234. Now let's see what Denmark is. It's 208. So no, they do not bother to, uh, bother to correct that. Okay, so the question is, can we, we need, we do need to fix this, because otherwise we're going to give an answer that's so wrong that uh, even I feel, would feel bad giving it. And I, you know, as you know, I hate everybody. So, you know, when a psychopath hates giving the answer, you, you need to fix it. So let's go ahead and uh, grab the data here, even if we're not going to use it like this. Uh, conversions. And I think the only thing we get out of here is conversions. But we might be able to get a little bit. We might need a little bit more. But but this is so I don't need to declare the um, country data array. That's what we're calling C hash, by the way. Um, as you can see, this is just gorgeously horrible. Again, this basically reads from BC lib git home. There's probably a way to standardize that. Uh, dependent country CDS. Uh, reads the ISO, the name, and the admin zero. And I'm going to bet you anything that the ISO name and admin zero here are not going to be the three-digit codes that we're going to we're going to need. So in fact, we're not going to be able to do this conversion as easily as we want. Um, right. So these are two-digit codes. GI becomes GB. GL becomes DK. Uh, not helpful to us because these are these are the three-digit codes. Uh, we might be able to get lucky by looking at the uh, name and ma doing name matching, but that's really, really pushing it. So I don't want to do that. Okay. So now let's sweep briefly. Um, see, I don't see a way of getting the data we need. So this is, and I don't think this is going to include the uh, the number that we need. So isn't that just, just gorgeous? And how many lines is this? Well, this doesn't line doesn't count, but it's um, it's a good chunk. It's a good 46 lines. So I could try to do stuff manually, and uh, part of that would, of course, be it would help out the universe in general because I would add a three-letter code to all of these. And I'm really tempted to do it now, but um, I'm trying to see if there's something cleverer we can do. Um, uh, I rule about the Aland Islands, Saint Barthelme. Bouvet Island, Cook I uh, okay, whatever. Um, I wonder if Wake Atoll is listed. No, it's not. It's not an island, it's an atoll. Um, not an asshole, could be. It's an atoll. Okay, so let's see what we're doing here. We're going to, uh, we need the three digit country codes. Uh, f oh, unfortunately, we're going to need them for both uh, the, the American Samoa and for the dependent code. So that is really, really ugly. So I think there's a translation, um, you know, of these that we can get and uh, this is just getting ugly but there is there is a way to get from uh, uh, I think there's actually a very simple way to get from these I don't even, I don't even have it let's see if I have something that's called oh wow I forgot I had Conquer Club stuff on here um, yes and again I forgot to pipe the list but it, this should be faster because it's already been cached in its memory or whatever Okay, um, I was at one point I was going to go through Small Wonder and uh, and really, really uh, wickify it. Got far two episodes, got sick of it. Love you, Vicky, but you know, whatever. Um, comparison maps, I might not actually have this. Um, these are all things I was going to put on to uh, WordPress. Uh, and I, I think these are things I actually have on WordPress. I wanted to convert it to something else. All right, let's just go ahead and ask for... Um, Actually, these guys might have it, because two-letter code, two-letter. Of course, I'm not going to have it. Translate three-letter country code to two-letter country code. Not, even though it doesn't show anything, that should give us what we need. A. Okay, that's not too bad, actually. Um... That is, can I download this as a CSV, or do I have to ugly, ugly fuck it? Um, 
I like the way the oh, I think the Island Islands came last because it's really uh, a with a zero o over it, which is pronounced. What the fuck are you Danish people doing? Lind Islands. Um. Oh, there's a pricing, so probably not. Okay, clever little trick where I am so freaking tempted to do. If I had numeric installed on this machine, which I don't, um, and it's not part of the repo either, unfortunately, uh, you could cut and paste this into numeric, and numeric would recognize it, would convert it into a you know a spreadsheet, which you could convert to a CSV. Very, very nice, actually. Um, but I don't have numeric installed here. Uh, I'm tempted to see if Emacs will do the, you know what, let's try it. Uh, and it will belong here if we ever get around, oh, actually it will belong in maps. But anyway, CC2, CC3, I will put my name in front of it just because I want, want to. And we'll call it CSV. Alright, so this is not going to work the way, exactly the way I want it to, but it's what's going to happen here is I'm going to cut and paste this. Uh, la 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 la. And I'm hoping the format will be good enough that I can make a few tweaks in Emacs and we can just use it as is. This is, of course, going to be a very dumb decision on my part because it is not going to work. And, and make sure I get all of them. Sometimes if you leave off just one, it's, it's worse than not leaving off. Okay, there we go. Control C. Or I could just do edit paste. Now, if I'm very, very lucky, there are tabs in here. And, yep, there are tabs in here. So what I'm going to do is replace the tabs, first things first, with commas. Do that. That looks a lot better. Now, we hate spaces, so we're going to replace the spaces with nothingness. And viola, that was an, oh, fudge, 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 fudge. We are not going to replace the, uh, because some countries have names with spaces in them. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to replace space comma with just a comma. And there we go. Uh, this should be the thing that converts from, oh my god, plurinational state of China, Christmas line. So again, the, and this is fine because we're going we're gonna to convert. And now, just as we're getting to this exciting part, it's time for me to check to see how long I've been streaming. I've been streaming for one hour, 17 minutes. So I think, I think we've done enough here that if you're really interested, uh, you can go kill yourself. Um, or you can work further on this, or you can take it. I don't give a damn what you do, really. I don't even, this isn't even for you. Uh, but anyway, it looks like we can, we can take a little break here. Uh, this is going to be an ugly double conversion we're going to do when we get back, which may or may not be today. And, but at least we can do it now. We can sort of get from uh, the, you know, the, uh, we can sort of get the country, uh, all the information we need about the country that's going to be useful for us in printing out data, including, very importantly, the dependency information because uh, islands are not really countries unless they're Australia, which is actually a continent, not a country, and there are other island nations, so forget I said that. Goodbye.